It's a blessing to do the book of Habakkuk with you. If you'd open your Bibles there for the next few minutes, it's interesting as we start to uh, explain the title, Clinging to God When Life Makes No Sense. The book of Habakkuk is a fascinating study of how a man of God under the inspiration of God's Spirit deals with questions, deep questions, big questions about God. Habakkuk means clinging or a clinging embrace. It speaks of uh, kind of like when I walk in the door at night after work and my one-year-old and three-year-old, one is on each leg and they, they're like koala bears. Their arms and legs are all the way around me and they just, and I can walk and they're, they're on. And that's a clinging embrace. And Habakkuk means a clinging embrace. And that's what he does to God. When, when life didn't make any sense, and basically I could tell you the whole book in one minute, what happens is Israel's bad, Babylon's worse. And God says, Babylon's going to destroy Israel. And Habakkuk goes, wait a minute. We're not as bad as they are, and we're your people. What's going on? And he starts saying, wait a minute. God, and he just goes through all these questions. Are you really holy and omnipotent and sovereign and all this? And through it all, what's interesting is this book is his personal conversation with God. And that's what makes it extra special. But let's read through this. God watches us tonight as we live in a nation suffering very much the same disease that ancient Israel suffered. It's a collective societal amnesia about our spiritual heritage. In ancient Israel, it had to do with closing the temple down, hiding the law of God and neglecting his worship. In America, it's found in the insidious concept we see all around us of reconstructing our history. Chuck Colson, in his thoughtful work in 1992 called The Body, points to one of our well-known movie makers, Kevin Costner, as he fancifully rewrote the history of the West in his Dances with Wolves. If you know anything about the West, that is totally an inaccurate representation of history. Then, again, in Robin Hood, he rewrote British history very adeptly and put a Muslim as the good guy in Britain, uh, which is a fanciful rewriting of history. Deconstructionism is a growing skepticism about objective truth. It's the dismantling of language, texts, and history to the point that history is eroded and society disintegrates. And basically, the idea of this new group of the, the media is that if we can just make people not know what words mean and make them not have any historical basis, they'll just erode into believing anything and they'll kind of live in a Star Wars world of, of science fiction. Now, back on your papers, listen to the mighty prophet Habakkuk. In chapter 1 he says, God raises up adversaries. And by the way, that's a truth throughout the whole Bible. And tonight if you have an adversary in life, at work, at school, in your neighborhood, in your family, God raised them up. Be very careful how you treat adversaries. If someone is personally targeting on you, they're locking on you with their homing beacon, and they're going to be your nemesis and your problem, be very careful how you treat them because God raises up adversaries. They don't just, they're not accidental quirks in the universe. God raises up adversaries against us to demonstrate his glory and to get a hold of our hearts and refine us. In chapter 2 he says, the righteous live by faith, but the wicked have no hiding place. And we're going to look at that. It's very interesting, especially in our world of drug cartels and, and, and mass murder and everything else. Um, God says there's no hiding place for the wicked. In chapter 3, he says, hope in God despite any hopeless situation. When we get there, that is especially one of the, the most beautiful portions of all the Word of God. And uh, in conclusion, however, when a nation turns from its spiritual heritage, judgment is inevitable and inescapable. Well, let's do a little summary of the book. Habakkuk's ministry started during the reign of Jehoiakim, just prior to the invasion of Nebuchadnezzar, and thus the people of Judah must have been in great fear because of the signs they could see around them with Babylon. This is when Israel was falling apart, Habakkuk was writing. And, and basically, uh, uh, Nebuchadnezzar had swung by one time in 605, killed the king, Josiah, leaves, after taking and deporting off the, the cream of the crop, Daniel and others, and leaves and says, I'm coming back to get you when I get my house in order. And he went back to be crowned king of, of Babylon. His father was the king and had died. The purpose of this book is to emphasize God's righteousness and the purpose of this book is to emphasize God's righteousness and bringing destruction to Jerusalem by an ungodly nation. And Babylon displayed God's sovereignty as he used them as an instrument.